Greetings, distinguished colleagues. I want to greet all of you. So let us start. The first two presenters are not uh, are experiencing some technical issues with connecting, but uh, as soon as they will join us, we will represent them. And the first presenter will be Loktiv Valery Borisovich, head of the Department of Molecular Virology of Flavi Viruses and Hepatitis Viruses, Vector State Research Center of the Rospotrebnadzor, Russia. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you, distinguished colleagues. I hope you can hear me, you can see the presentation well. Let us check it. Yeah, leave it like this. Distinguished colleagues, at first, I want to thank the facilitators of the conference for their support and help for the possibility that was granted to me in joining this conference and delivering on my topic. I hope that uh, in the virtual space there are many people to listen to and I want to greet also online attendees and I hope we will get through this. So vector-borne infections are playing a huge significant role in our world. And on the first slide up there you see the classical model of Zika virus that is a vector-borne infection. It is uh, transferred through the bite of a mosquito. And this here in the lower part of the slide you see the Kaltsova scientific center. So residential areas are one-fourth of uh, the city of a research and development city and this strange thing that you see uh, on the uh, right side uh, this is the biotechno park Kaltsova it is also representing Kaltsova here this is the place where we work where we also live and where we try to uh, do our research work undoubtedly I think that biotechno parks and uh, science uh, concentrated cities uh, represented by Kaltsova is one of the best places where we can work and achieve new interesting results. So virus uh, taxonomy is showed in uh, the official virus taxonomy. There is the International Taxonomy Committee uh, which for a long time was fighting against viruses uh, in uh, publishing the names of the viruses uh, once in four years and on the level of 2011 the possibilities to print manuscripts uh, at the taxonomy committee uh, were at its end and there was just a reason if you will use one page to describe one virus and at this time we knew two and a half thousand of viruses the book with the description of all viruses would become a huge book and it would not it would be impossible to publish it on a page pair therefore the last 10th edition of taxonomy committee is now open uh, in open access and online this is a huge internet resource when in real time you may see everything and here down there you can see the um, Taxonomy of viruses. This tree is not readable, is not to read, but you may assess it. There are almost 8,000 uh, new viruses that are represented here, at eight types of realization of their genetic program. That means this is the world of viruses with which, in parallel to which we are living and existing. And when we speak about the other species we don't see viruses we see and understand although how the representatives of this virus kin viral kingdom are dealing with us this is the slide that shows uh, possible um, so biodiversity of the viral kingdom as now we know 5500 mammal species 391000 plant species and higher up to 10 millions of uh, invertebrates, 5 million species of fungi, and 1 and 6 millions of microbes. And if, according to the basic hypothesis that is uh, assumed to be pessimistic, 
if one species in the Earth biosphere is associated with at least one virus, so the parasite virus, we may think that we are surrounded by 20 million viruses. The pessimists and optimists are here represented because the optimists say, OK, it's OK then uh, one virus for the absolute parasite for one species. But let us count how many viral conditions of a human being, of uh, home pets, or of plants are existing. And you will understand that a thousand of pathogenic viruses are known for human population. And we understand that biodiversity of the possible viruses is uh, significantly more than we can even imagine. With the red color, I've highlighted two main kingdoms, mammal, mammals and invertebrates that live on the planet Earth. Just two main uh, representatives of the kingdom that are uniting us. These are the blood-sucking uh, invertebrates, like a classic example, a mosquito and and ticks. So these are the flying syringes that are providing for viruses to go into our organisms from invertebrate to vertebrates. For a long period of time, it was assumed that the kingdom of viruses, uh, upper level corner, is enclosed to itself and it is not correlated to the evolution of all life animals on our planet. But in 2018, there was uh, the uh, the change in the view of ev on evolution on our planet, and this shows us that we were all time get living with the viruses. They were also in uh, the primal uh, terrestrial animals, and you see this blue sea, Marburg Ebola virus, for example, and according to its phylogenic features some viruses of uh, in fish were the parenting viruses for the pathogens that we are now seeing in our life so why our knowledge in viruses and other viruses are limited if we will look at this tree as the tree of evolution of viruses the red dot is uh, representing all the possibilities that we have right now this is the system of cultivation on a cell culture uh, system for growing of uh, viruses on laboratory pets and animals and polymerase uh, chain reaction and uh, additional methods of diagnostics provided for a better picture of uh, identification of the viruses that are living in parallel with us as a parallel kingdom and only metagenomics provided for a better but for a betterment in the situation and it created theoretical prerequisites for us to be able to finally to see the biodiversity of viruses that are encompassing us and to see all the viruses that can pose a threat to us. I will tell uh, right now only about the taxonomy of flavivirus viruses and the changes that are seen here. Why do I need to limit myself? Because I will not have enough time to tell you about anything else. So what was interesting in this particular family? In the parallel uh, section, we had a lecture on uh, hepatitis C virus. Hepatitis C is the flavivirus type. 14 types are the classical examples of hepatitis C virus. And all you know that also uh, COVID situation was in 2020, but Nobel Prize was awarded to the uh, uh, team that was working with hepatitis C. After this work related to the hepatitis C was done, uh, and following the previous publications of related to hepatitis C, and these are the 1990s. I need to state here that the um, staff members of Vector were also participating at these works. So, two uh, two staff members of Vector were the first authors uh, for uh, the article of uh, transversion of hepatitis C, uh, Alexander Kalahalov, for example. And this article was nominated for Nobel 
Prize and the last author Charles Prize was awarded with Nobel Prize with, uh, for opening of the hepatitis C virus together with two colleagues. But still, in 1996, this article Science, uh, the operators of Vector at, the, at this moment uh, provided for a huge input in understanding and creating the situation with hepatitis C virus as we understand it right now and as it was stated on the virology session today the russia will pass the all russia program for um, fighting with hepatitis c in russia with use of the new biochemical drugs this initiative was voiced by the president of russian federation as of today uh, during uh, this was stated uh, this was stated today by the president of russian federation vladimir putin uh, what is else? Uh, what else is interesting here? Please put your attention that almost a third of viruses today, 50, 51 viruses, is in the last row unclassified viruses. I will speak about unclassified viruses a bit later, but all the viruses will, uh, were opened uh, in the recent times. Their roles in the pathology of uh, human beings and animals, mammals, and other species is not known right now. Flaviviruses, uh, as the genus, includes 53 species, species 75 uh, representatives, and I will speak about this more or less. So today's phylogenetic tree of uh, a flavivirus genus, a, you see it is, it is here now represented on the presentation, and it unites all of these viruses and all... Uh, uh, almost all of them are mosquito-borne or tick-borne. There are different uh, families of, of mosquito viruses, up to 100 types, 140 types. And the main five of flaviviral infections is provided here in blue. You know them, of course, dengue virus, Western Neil, West Nile virus, Zika virus, Japanese encephalitis virus, and yellow fever virus. But the tick bone encephalitis virus is under a question sign mark. Why? I will tell a bit later. I think we will not uh, speak in detail about uh, high, uh, about big five of the viruses. Uh, the last pandemics, uh, as you know, West Nile virus in 1999, Volgograd city, Astrakhan, and New York, Manhattan. And starting from this time, in several years, the West Nile virus uh, was distributed on all continents of Russia. In Russia, there are 28 uh, up to 30 subjects of Russian Federation that are regularly reg registering the circulation or disease cases of West Nile virus in, uh, uh, in outbreaks in nature. So although it is transferred through mosquito. And Zika virus, the last pandemics in Zika virus and flaviviruses was uh, evidenced in the last six, eight years. The WHO announced it as the global threat when uh, virus Zika from the limited uh, regions of Africa went further through the Indian Ocean, from the Pacific and was introduced on the territory of Southern America, Central America, Brazil, and there was a huge outbreak of Zika virus, Zika fever, and uh, in six months already 90 countries announced that they have cases of Zika virus, that people are infected, and the problem is that the virus lives within organism for a long period of time, and it is very seriously affecting the fetus at pregnancies, leading to microcephaly of a fetus. And by the way, we've managed to, or we almost managed to finalize the case with Zika virus, and then we faced COVID. Whether tick-borne encephalitis virus will be a part of uh, this grade five or grade six, but when we when we speak about the distribution of all these viruses in warm tropical zone of the continent, and they affect hundreds of millions of people living on the planet Earth, the tick-borne encephalitis in the northern Eurasia. Uh, we speak about this, and actually we're speaking about dozens of thousands of uh, patients with uh, this virus in Russia and Eurasia. The main hypothesis of the tick-borne flaviviruses is built on uh, the assumption that the 
phylogenography of tick-borne flaviviruses comes out of the Central Africa about 28,000 years ago. 25,000 uh, years uh, ago, there was uh, establishing of the virus CADAM, it were a key ADV, which uh, uh, went to the southern southern part of the plan, planet. And then the major part of the viral masses went through the Iran and Iraq currently, and went to the mid-Eurasia and Palestine virus uh, went uh, to the territory of uh, Americas. As of now, the tick-borne infections are distributed also here. And if we would speak about uh, the case that one virus of tick-borne encephalitis is uh, provided, uh, in, is is existing through the as it only tick-borne tick-borne uh, virus, we are speaking not only about the bites of ticks, but uh, in one tick. Uh, a human being can have uh, from 30 to 60 viruses and up to 20 uh, different pathogens. This is the situation that we are dealing with. And just a couple of words about tick-borne encephalitis virus that is speaking about the distribution of um, encephalitis virus in uh, Eurasia. This is the data of Chinese uh, researchers who found the historical stems of uh, tick-borne encephalitis virus in Himalaya, so Himalayan virus. They made the phylogenetic tests, and then they arrived at the conclusion that it came to the northern Eurasia through the southern part of western Siberia, and it was distributed in west and in east. Far eastern stems that were discovered as the first ones, they are the youngest ones, the youngest stems of the tick-borne encephalitis virus, and the oldest stems are the Siberian ones. And actually, the old virus is the hemorrhagic fever, Siberian hemorrhagic fever uh, virus that uh, uh, that uh, that was uh, existing four to four and a half thousand years ago. So the histo historically speaking, we have also here uh, the uh, color coding of the new stems of the viruses. And we have the non-controlled distribution of uh, tick-borne encephalitis in Western Europe. Europe. Now, now in Sp it is a common case for Spain, for f France, for Great Britain, for Spain, for uh, Alps, Germany, Czech Republic, Austria. These are the countries where the tick-borne encephalitis is registered in the territory and morbidity in Switzerland, for example is more severe than the tick-borne encephalitis situation on the territory of Novosibirsk region, for example. There are many cases, there are acute cases, and this is real, indeed, a huge problem. The new Flavi virus that I wanted to speak about, it was born and it was discovered uh, by the team of Vector in Guinea within the program of uh, state uh, within the state uh, virus, Kindia tick virus. This is the name of new multi-component virus. Ticks, Cephalos gigi, that were taken from the uh, home cows, domestic cows, they turn out to be infected by this particular virus. What is the most uh, interesting thing in this virus and what is making it different from other viruses? Let us look at the genome of these viruses. There are four segments. If we are used to flu virus, when one virus part is, con is containing all the segments, with this particular kindiatic virus, kindiatic virus, or jinkmengtic virus, is the same. Uh, that uh, one virus particle is having only one virus segment, and for the virus to be distributed further, one cell should include four virus particles that has its own virus segment. So actually, as uh, there is a joke within our community, we are used to the fact that sex uh, needs two people at least. But then, corona, uh, this kind of kindiatic virus should uh, be produced by four units that should be united within by one. Uh, uh, one cell. So four. It 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 actually takes four to make it. 
for the virus. So just a simple characteristic of uh, the fragments of the segment. You see the segments are really small. You see the quantity of nucleotides, about 3,000 nucleotides. Two segments are pretty much similar to the consecutives of uh, flavivirus. Two have no analogues. But still, this multi-component virus was discovered, and if it is in ticks, if it is in domestic cows or um, in other animals, mammals, this also is working with human being as a mammal. And just another interesting flavi virus that we've managed to find. Okay, tick. It is in ticks, is okay. But what about mosquitoes? Mosquitoes, uh, let us uh, represent this uh, African uh, four uh, segments within uh, Jinkman virus in Africa. And when we speak about uh, the mosquito virus, we need to have already five segments for the virus to live on and to result in infection. We know that uh, in apes, for example, this virus uh, is uh, they they are susceptible susceptible but not a human being because we don't know about this right now. This is a rat uh, phylogenetic tree for Jinkman virus in uh, the former Yugoslavia. Uh, we have found the Jinkman uh, similar virus multi-component uh, virus virus in patients with Crimea Congo hemorrhagic fever. Crimea Congo hemorrhagic fever is conditioned by a mixture of viruses, so co-infection, and it is providing for co-living within one cell in one patient. So we've changed, we've uh, tested this hypothesis in the south of Russia, Stavropol region. Uh, this was the article of 2020. So you see this detection of the RNA for new multi-component virus in patients with Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. You see the Jinkman variants here in Rostov variants. This is a multiple component virus that is represented in blood of patients in Stavropol region. RNA Crimean Congo uh, hemorrhagic fever in southern Russia, European subtype, and new multi-component virus, uh, virus Ma Manich virus. This is the new name of the virus. And then we have the question whether it is broadly or not broadly represented in Russia and how the pathology is changed for, for the human being that will get the infection of both viruses, Crimea and Congo hemorrhagic fever, and this new multi-component virus, Manich virus. Just uh, some words about mosquitoes. We got used that to think about malaria, about uh, the, uh, but also in some conditions when it's hot in summer and when there are many rains. But let us speak about Siberia, Russia, for example. This is a strict continental climate. The south southern parts of Novosibirsk region, and we have here the um, the types uh, of the mosquitoes that are flying in our regions. We have 17 AIDS. Uh, types of uh, mosquitoes in Novosibirsk region. With green, you may see actually the types of the mosquitoes that were for the first time uh, registered on the territory of Novosibirsk region. And there is a question. So what do they transmit? And what is the role that they are playing in the pathology of human being? So metagenome analysis has been conducted and uh, we collected the mosquito samples in the neighboring areas of Novosibirsk and we identified 40 viruses in these mosquitoes and 16 viruses. Uh, we sequenced uh, the full genome and uh, for 24 viruses we saw that the uh, genome was represented on, with the capside uh, elements or also with the uh, DNA and uh, other types. So. Of course, those mosquitoes are living around our cells, and we do not pay attention to that. But those are different families of RNA uh, containing viruses. So here you can see different types of uh, the families. Uh, Partivivirade, Totivivirade, Tomborsviride, Ilflaribide, and uh, other non-classified viruses. So 
a lot of them are connected to the uh, Coccolithidia richardi and uh, actually the domino de dominating up to 50% of the population. Here you can see the graph of how the new viruses are presented in mosquitoes. So the gray upper columns, please pay attention to them. They represent the virus sequences that the contemporary databases cannot identify. So those are unknown viruses and their share uh, in mosquitoes can count account for up to 24-25%. And uh, the most uh, taxonomic spectrum here is represented by picornaviruses. The, well, you probably are well aware of uh, the classic picornavirus. For example, uh, the polio, uh, so you probably understand uh, the role of this family in the pathology among humans. And here you can see many other representatives of this family and they are quite serious pathogens for a human being. Well, in fact, this is a quite uh, a randomized situ situation and we have to admit that the new viruses and mosquitoes live uh, jointly together with us and we are not well aware of these uh, of their role in the pathogenetic uh, structure in the human population so and also I'd like to mention a bit about the consequences currently we are getting prepared for the publication of uh, about uh, the novel flavilac virus in the exodic ticks and patients in Russia. So we collected samples from patients in Vladivostok, uh, from 150 patients that were placed uh, in a hospital with uh, some infection after a tick bite. Well, this is a quite a common situation. Uh, Everybody is uh, talking about uh, tick encephalitis, but here we see that we've also identified a new virus that was uh, in the blood of those patients tested. Uh, Hosikitic virus, uh, this virus was called, and judging by its structure, it is a flavivirus, and it can cause the diseases uh, in a human body jointly with the other flaviviruses. And so when it comes to the tick encephalitis, it combined, uh, it was combined in the mo a lot of cases and uh, the triple infection of Hosikitic uh, virus, uh, the tick encephalitis borreliose was also identified uh, and uh, there were some cases when Hosikitic virus was uh, diagnosed, but the clinical picture uh, of the patient that was hospitalized with this, uh, it will be described later. So it all allowed us to catch the sequence of this virus and to proceed with the phylogenesis and uh, the materials. Here you can see the uh, phylogenetic tree of the flaviviruses. This is um, a round dentogram and uh, at the very upper part of the slide you can see the description of all this. So the Baltic virus, uh, you can also see it here. First, it was identified in the south of China, then in the Caribbean region, uh, in the places where people usually go to vacation. Also, uh, Tribunga virus, it was called, and uh, Hasekitic virus, you can also see it here. It was identified in the Siberian region. You see here five isolators, and uh, the Bratislava also is present here. And so we can conclude that this virus circulates also in Bratislava. It is in the ticks, uh, or it's ticks in there. And uh, this is an official discovery, and it was uh, all published in the databases on the sequencing of um, the ticks. And today, just three years ago, or three days ago, uh, the Institute of Pasteur in France published information that they registered quite a similar virus in Europe. But they couldn't connect it to the pathology of uh, the human being, but we did that. Indeed, there is this virus and it can be transmitted through a tick bite. And here on the diagram, you can see a person and uh, a, a tick. So the RNA-dependent uh, polymerase was uh, 
sequenced and uh, we identified some uh, sequences in Vladivostok and the same uh, was identified in um, the ticks in the Novosibirsk region. So the vertical line uh, here can tell us that this virus was quite a similar uh, in the tick and in the human being. And so we could reproduce the structure of the genome, and you can see it at the very bottom of the slide, and you can see the NS3 protein and uh, uh, RNA uh, polymerase, and this is quite characteristic of, of all, almost all the flaviviruses. And uh, the rest of the sequences haven't been um, decoded yet, but uh, we see that uh, this structure of the genes uh, already allows us to identify this virus as a flavivirus that is a pathogenic for a human being and it is transmitted through a tick bite. So the incubation period is from three to five days and it is characterized by the damage uh, of the upper lungs of the body. So uh, we can also confuse it and mix it with COVID or take it for COVID. So flaviviruses are quite new viruses and we managed to identify the new group of viruses and for two of them we proved that they can be transmitted to a human person, a human being, and so the Nobel Prize was in 2008 given and you probably know that the right the right virus is the HIV virus and it won the Nobel Prize the discovery of it uh, won the Nobel Prize and here we can also see the smallpox virus and uh, in 2002 the sculpture that uh, wanted to create the virus model, uh, they presented the hypothetical virus that will damage the humanity in the upcoming future. So that installation uh, was presented in 2008. And uh, in the upper part of uh, the slide, we can see the glass model of the coronavirus that results in COVID-19. And uh, you can see that the artist guessed many years ago what virus will humanity face in the future. And so 2020, this is the hepatitis C virus and the Nobel Prize for that. And when the next Nobel Prize uh, will be given in connection to the liquidation of the pandemic uh, caused by COVID-19, I hope that it will be given in the upcoming future. So currently everybody is studying the coronavirus. The work has been done in quite an extensive way. Just yesterday I took a look at the articles in the referred scientific journals on the topic of COVID-19 within um, a little bit more than one year, to be more exact, uh, 15 months. Do you have any figure? Can you guess what is the number of the publications? So 125,000 referred scientific publications uh, on COVID. So of course I can't read uh, such a great amount of articles and I don't think that there is any person in this world that can analyze comprehensively this problem. As of today, perhaps we would require the help of the artificial intelligence as well as uh, we would require the cooperation from different parties here. But I'm sure that these 125,000 articles contain the recipe how to fight and how to win over COVID-19. Thank you. Okay, Valery Borisovich, thank you very much. You presented us a very interesting and a valuable report on the flaviviruses. Uh, dear audience, if you have any questions, this is the time to ask them. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you. Then our next speaker will 
B. Sao Min Han, and uh, the report will be about the Sentinel surveillance system of Chikungunya, Dengue, and Zika in southern Vietnam in 2020. The floor is yours, please. We can't hear you, unfortunately. Please, could you switch on your mic? We can't hear you. Please, could you switch on your mic? Because we can't hear you. There is no sound coming. There is no sound coming from you. We can't hear you, unfortunately. Could you please switch on your mic? We can't hear you. Please, could you switch on your mic? Please, could you switch on your mic? We can't hear you. Then the next presenter, very sorry for this uh, technical issues and difficulties. Who is our next presenter then? Then we'll give the floor to our next speaker, Olga Viktorovna Maletskaya. Olga Viktorovna, are you with us? Can you hear us? Then the floor probably has to be yours. Could you please switch on your mic? Olga Viktorna, can you hear us? Olga Viktorna, can you hear us? If you can hear us, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Probably Olga Viktorovna 
cannot hear us for some reason. Can we connect to Olga Viktorovna somehow and ask her if she can hear us and if she can start her presentation? Okay, probably we'll then go to the next speaker because we can't spend too much time in here. We hope that all the technical issues will be addressed in the nearest future. For some reason, we have some technical issues. The organizers are working on addressing them. Now, then, let's give the floor to Holmerzo Dovlatov, the director of the Republican Center of Tropical Diseases Republic of Tajikistan, and uh, He'll talk about the progress towards elimination of malaria and measure to prevent its return in the Republic of Tajikistan. Okay, thank you very much. Could you please switch on my presentation? I'd be very grateful. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give you an overview of the progress in elimination and uh, prevention of malaria in Republic of Tajikistan. So it was back in 1960s that the malaria was identified in uh, Tajikistan. And since then, up to 1990s, sometimes we did register some singular cases in those territories that are bordering with the Republic of uh, Afghanistan. And those cases, mostly, came from the vectors, the transmission carriers that were coming to us from uh, Afghanistan. The epidemiological situation worsened, uh, however, in the beginning of uh, the 2000s. And it was also provoked by the political instability as well as the migration of citizens from southern regions, southern parts. from, as I said, southern parts of the Republic. And in the 1992, and up and through 1997, we saw the rise in the number of the registered malaria cases. And uh, it is connected to the fact, as I said, that our citizens uh, came from the Republic of Afghanistan, and while they were returning to Tajikistan, they brought some new cases. And back in 1997, we saw the peak of this disease, and we registered about 30,000 cases of malaria. Apart from that, it was the first time that the Republic of Tajikistan registered the case of tropic uh, malaria. And by, 20, by 2001, 
It accounted for already 5% of the total malaria cases. As a result of some large-scale measures on the territory of our republic, the epidemiological situation started to improve. And the cases of tropic malaria did not appear anymore in 2009. And in 2015, we didn't register a single case of malaria. And uh, this progress was made due to the programs that we adopted back in 1997 and that extended to 2010 and 2015. So in general, we adopted three programs on the fight against the spread of malaria. And we adopted two strategic plans in the Republic of Tajikistan. The first one dates back to 2015 and 2017. And as of today, the Republic implements the next strategic plan on prevention of malaria in Tajikistan, and it will be active up to 2023. Definitely, these programs and the strategic plan are the result of the work of our government as well as the international organizations that worked in collaboration with us during all these times. Starting from 2015, we stopped the local transmission of malaria in um, the Republic of Tajikistan. And over these six years, we mostly registered uh, 17 cases of malaria. Mostly those are imported cases, while our Republic saw the visits from the citizens of other countries and also our own citizens came from uh, other countries or they were foreigners. Uh, 14 cases were our own citizens and three cases were foreigners. You can see it right here in the slide. Mostly our citizens' compatriots came from Afghanistan, from Gabon, from uh, Pakistan, and they got infected there. And. Uh, as for the foreign citizens, they were citizens from Pakistan and other, from Italy and uh, other countries. This is the stratification of regions in Tajikistan for potential uh, malaria cases. And as you can see on uh, this slide, the red zones are the regions that are on the borderline with Afghanistan where the potential of uh, new cases of malaria is high. Although, starting from 2015, we don't have any registered cases of malaria, and uh, still our healthcare system is providing for epidemiological and uh, uh, epidemiological vigilance. Uh, speaking about uh, epidemiological control, uh, this is applicable to the regions, as it is stated, on the border with Islamic State, Afghanistan, where the potential of uh, malaria is high. And to uh, trace out these cases, we are using the passive, proactive and reactive methods. And notification is made uh, according to the scheme of epidemic epidemiological vigilance, it, the whole information is uh, stored uh, in paper form and in digital form in our archives. We are providing for notification about all cases, imported or local, at the day of uh, evidence uh, in state uh, agencies and uh, starting from the clinics 
uh, or first line, uh, the information goes to the center of state uh, epidemiological surveillance, then to the Republican Center for overcoming tropical diseases. Every case of malaria, be it local malaria or imported malaria, should be investigated and uh, subject to the research. Also, as in phases of uh, elimination, we are filling in the documents like a notification, ambulance map, ambulance card, history of the disease, epidemiological research, and uh, report. And according to the results of epidemiological diagnostics, we are prescribing the classification of case uh, of the outbreak and uh, provide for anti-malaria events. The information is also mapped uh, uh, by the entomologists. We have uh, facilitated the work for uh, uh, with uh, uh, supposed malaria cases uh, in um, clinics. According to the Tajikistan Republic uh, decree on malaria, uh, in case uh, of uh, the fever, the, malaria, the blood is assessed uh, in, within the clinic for malaria in three times during 24 hours, next 24 hours after first admission uh, for all chains, be it uh, in the village, in the city, or in other uh, state medical agencies, three times a day after admission of the patient with a temperature 37 plus degrees Celsius, we are making the tests, triple tests, to not to let malaria in. And as I already stated, the same information is also accumulated by the private medical um, institutions. Speaking about military, uh, we are especially working with the customs uh, along the Afghanistan border, there are many medical uh, agencies and military uh, and, uh, and, and military uh, service. And we are providing for scarificators, uh, uh, glasses and drugs, insecticides uh, and impregnated tissues to protect from the mosquitoes. We are also facilitating work uh, to make laboratory tests in regards to foreigners. In 2018, we've made a research of 257 students. In 2019, 5,493. And in 2020, because of the coronavirus and the pandemics, um, we had a limited uh, uh, l limited intake of uh, foreign students, but still 1,423 students from India, Pakistan, Afghanistan and other countries were under research. We also are working out the, uh, the, the working out the ways of communication with tourist tourism agencies um, with uh, the following recommendations and we are purchasing the hardware and reagents to, per, to make a diagnostics of malaria f and in all uh, clinics we have uh, lab laboratory appliances microscopes for example for the for in time research we we have made uh, trainings for 55 specialists who are trained for diagnostics of malaria in the trainings and reference laboratories for control and provision of uh, high uh, diagnostics quality are working along the, the country. All positive and 10% of negative um, uh, responses are delivered to the refer reference laboratory to the Republican Center for uh, Secondary Research. We are also making blind crossed tests. And out of the quantity of the research, as uh, I told, more than 70% of preparates is, uh, uh, are distributed uh, on the borderline between Afghanistan with the highest malaria potential. 
We also developed national protocol uh, for cases of malaria. We have drugs, anti-malaria drugs, according to the protocol, chloroquine, primakine, and coartem. And also the national protocol uh, in the new draft of 2014. Also, as we already stated, starting from 2015, we have no registered cases of local malaria, but entomological uh, vigilance is uh, still on set in the regions uh, characterized by high potential of uh, uh, new cases of malaria. What do we make there? On an annual basis, we run entomological monitoring for Malaria, malaria, we are extinguishing and uh, uh, deleting the points uh, of uh, um, distribution of uh, uh, mosquitoes. We are steadily running monitoring of resistance to insecticides. At the same time, together with the Ministry of Melioration and Water Resources, we are supporting the following events. On an annual basis, uh, approximately 1,500,000 square meters of channels and collectors are cleansed. And this is uh, the, 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 ma the major, uh, the majority, these are the majority of uh, places, so watery places where uh, the um, the mosquitoes are uh, are present. So we are also working on the awareness of uh, local population. What do we make? Uh, uh, how do we work? We use the 5% alpha cipermetrine, 5% on the pilot uh, tracks between Tajikistan and Afghanistan. We have epidemiological and entomological vigilance for malaria uh, on the Tajik-Afghanistan border. We are also studying inv invasive and transmissive diseases in Tajikistan. And although in 2020, all the system, the whole system was uh, fighting against COVID-19, we've managed to run one entomology and parasitology research where, where we made the research of, uh, of mosquitoes in regions with high potential of malaria cases. And we, are also, we were also running parasitology research which means that more than 1,000 of citizens of our republic in the borderline of, between Tajikistan and Afghanistan were subject to tests, blood tests, to study the plasmoidic uh, uh, features of the blood to exclude chronic diseases. We are making uh, monitoring of the revision, uh, monitoring and revision of the type uh, uh, glycidae and psychodidae within uh, the resistance uh, uh, anodium superpictus to insecticides. Uh, all the tests were made in 2019. And this here, in particular, is distribution along the years. We We've, uh, we are closely working with the military agencies, and we are also um, distributing closures for all for the border lines with Afghanistan. Because I need to state here that in certain places, the there are one to one and a half or two kilometers from our republic to Afghanistan. Therefore, we need to exclude the contamination of these regions. Uh, and we are in, in this particular regions, we are conducting the, the works that you see on the screen right now to, um, to clean the contaminated or possibly contaminated regions. And uh, last year, we've managed to decontaminate uh, about 5 million cubic meters along the border with Afghanistan. Okay. 
So, uh, within our programs and uh, at the realization of our strategy plan, we have the transborder cooperation. We've uh, we've exchanged the best practices between Tajikistan and Kyrgyz Republic in terms of certification. Because, as we know, our neighbor states, Republic Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, they all they have already got the certificate of uh, WHO on the status of malaria free country and to make this we've invited the Kyrgyz specialists our neighbors to exchange the experience here and we also facilitated a visit of our specialists in November 2017 when we've uh, when we when we were introduced into the preparation of documents we've uh, make we've made the cooperative research in uh, matters of leishmaniasm according to the framework of the transborder cooperation and we also facilitated uh, coordination uh, coordination meeting on uh, the issues uh, of uh, malaria and leishmaniasis in Tajikistan and between Tajikistan and uh, Af Afghanistan and we've uh, arrived at a joint statement on cross-border cooperation on malaria in Tajikistan and Afghanistan in 2010 and in 2012. What are the problems and hindrances on the way to elimination or prevention of the restore of transmission of malaria? I want to state from the very beginning that our country is now on the direct way to the certificate uh, issued by World uh, Health Organization and stating that we are a malaria-free country. We are going along this direction. We are working on it. And by the special decree of the Ministry of Health Care, we've shaped the Republican staff where we see not only the specialists from healthcare, but also specialists from other agencies and state bodies, be it uh, uh, Ministry of Defense or other agencies that are related to this issue. And moreover, we are working with the European Regional Bureau of uh, W. H.O. that uh, provided us with new samples of documents for preparation or to the granting of the certificate. And what are the problems? This is the risk of renew of the local transmission of malaria. This is a high risk, especially in the regions that are on the border with Afghanistan. And uh, because uh, of the high f oh, because of the high probability, we can see here the parts of uh, Tajikistan that are uh, lying on the border with Afghanistan Republic. And we have a real huge line here. And these territories in Afghanistan, I will show it to you right now, in the northern parts, provinces of Afghanistan. This is the information for 2017 that are uh, on uh, the border with our uh, country, with Tajikistan. For 2017, we see this picture according to province, and these are the regions Badakhshan, Badakhshan Kunduz, Tahor, Balkh, and these are the provinces of Afghanistan that are lying on the border with Tajikistan. And you may see that in 2017, they had also uh, tropic malaria cases for three days. That means more than 3,000 cases in total in these regions are registered. Uh, I mean cases of malaria. And primary and secondary malaria sources in Tajikistan and northern Afghanistan have practically the same types of geographic landscape. And the main types of uh, malaria and the fauna are pretty much the same. So the main sources here in Tajikistan and Afghanistan are Anaphlesus superpictus and Anaphlesus pulcherimus. And the secondary is Hercanus and Claviger. And all anti-mosquito uh, actions uh, at the border regions of between Tajikistan and Afghanistan should be pointed out on these four types because the other Anopheles types that are distributed in the territory are not uh, transmitting malaria. 
So we need to preserve the success that we've gained. Uh, we need to eliminate malaria further. We need a goal-length strategy from the side of international organization to uh, cover all the priority issues related to malaria. In the last years, in the recent years, we see an increase in tourism, in international migration, a migration of studi students from endemic uh, malaria endemic countries, uh, household migrations, and therefore these contingents uh, should be uh, sh should be controlled also here and we need also work uh, on the preventive uh, means we have uh, not enough resources to provide uh, special trainings uh, to increase awareness and to accumulate more uh, human power here. We have uh, not enough transport means, uh, modern uh, technical means uh, for uh, insecticides, storage and delivery. And practically in the last years, we don't have the trans-border cooperation with Afghanistan right now. And what are the uh, offers from our side to coordinate actions to restore uh, uh, to restore malaria-free cases, we need to uh, work uh, with the states that are at the border of uh, Tajikistan, and we need to work on the border in a deeper way. We need to cut down the um, cases of uh, imported infections by mass screening on the border. We need to provide for cooperative research and uh, work um, on the territories of Tajikistan and Afghanistan. And we also need to work further on coordination meetings with uh, uh, Afghanistan, with Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan to fight malaria in region and prevent cases of imported malaria. And we need to exchange our best, pra best practices with colleagues from Uzbekistan in, question, in issues of certification. Thank you. I want to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Haldemurza Davlatovic. Shall we have any questions? So we don't have any questions right now. So please be seated. Thank you again. And I wish you good health. And thank you very much. Thank you to the Presidium, to the Secretariat for inviting me for this great conference. Thank you so much. And the next presenter will be by delivered by Cao Min Tan, head of microbiology and immunology department at Pasteur Institute in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Sentinel surveillance system for chikungunya, dengue, Zika in southern Vietnam. Uh, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, I'm Carmen Hung. I'm works on Buster Institute in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Buster Institute is a regional institute in charge of 20 southern provinces. Buster Institute in Ho Chi Minh City direct and implement public health activity and search. I would like to introduce the Sentinel surveillance system for chikungunya, dengue, Zika virus in Southern Vietnam during 2020. In order to improve the system, I would like to have more cooperation and assistance from the Federal Service for surveillance on arrival protection and human being of the Russian Federal. My presentation it consists of three sessions. Uh, first of all, I introduce uh, the chikungunya dengue and Zika virus surveillance system in southern Vietnam. Number two, I will talk something about the result 
and uh, number three, the future future orientation. Vietnam is located in the Southeast Asia with a tropical moonlight climate. There are high prey, up rainfall and high humidity. The weather is suitable for mosquito grow up. Southern Vietnam is an endemic area for dengue hemorrhage, fever and other Akbar virus like chikungunya or Zika virus. In Vietnam from the 1998, the national program for a control and preventing of dengue hemorrhagic fever was built up with two kind of laboratory methods, virus surveillance and serological testing. However, on March 2016, after the first case of Zika were detected in Vietnam, uh, the number of Zika case were increased. Uh, so, uh, to deal with this problem, um, Ministry of Health of Vietnam uh, has succeeded to set up the chikungunya uh, Zika and dengue surveillance system. Uh, after that, I will call the CDZ surveillance system. This is the reason why we uh, set up this surveillance in the southern of Vietnam. Uh, first of all, I will introduce uh, the activity of this surveillance. Uh, for this monitor, we collected on my patient the disease is characterized by fever and hemorrhagic sign or skin rash, fever joint pain, arthritis. Uh, with the blind, uh, the bright friend, it looked like to indicate the uh, dengue uh, patient. And with that frame, it indicates the uh, Zika and Chikungunya virus patient. In the in the trend, in the first ten months of the last year. All sites in southern Vietnam were to, to establish this system, including Tropical Hospital, Hồng Vương Hospital, Long Thanh District Hospital, and Thái Lai District Hospital. Uh, additionally, with the risk of infarctus, Chikungunya came from Cambodia in uh, last October. A provincial sentinel system were were uh, taken sample more, including An Giang, Đồng Tháp, Long An, Tiền Giang, Tây Ninh, Đồng Nai, uh, Bến Tre, and Ho Chi Minh City. Having two activity for this island, uh, we collect. 10 serous sample, they were certified K definition of the weight for each sign. Collecting mosquito and lava sample to, uh, in around confirmed positive K. But for this presentation, I uh, just talked about the laboratory result. The diagram illustrates the various state of laboratory diagnostic algorithm. Several specimens were received 
from the own sentinel uh, site were transferred to Ho Chi Minh City. Total RNA uh, will be attracted by Kai Am viral, uh, Kai Am viral adjustment kits and testing by a trial black real time RGBCR. Um, to detect the RNA positive for dengue virus or chikungunya virus or Zika virus. At least now, more research is including for uh, inoculation of inoculation of uh, seropositive to the C636 cell line and for this uh, virus isolate um, obtained above, we, uh, we will do the, we will perform the next generation sequencing by Illumina MySec to try to identify the genotype of this virus strain. And this is some result of the CDZ surveillance in the southern Vietnam 2020. Last year for the CDZ the surveillance, we got totally 710 serapation and uh, we got, we see that dengue, hemo, dengue virus is the most upper virus um, positive case. Positive, uh, it's equal to 12.8%. After that, uh, chikungunya virus were positive with 0.8%. For Zika virus, we just only got one positive RNA case. The batch show how to group side participant in the positive pathogen result. Do you see, can you see that both uh, sentinel side and provincial side were detected dengue virus, detected dengue virus, but for Zika virus and chikungunya virus, we just only find out in the provincial sentinel site, the new size. Mm, that means it, mm, it is about that chikungunya and Zika virus were uh, got circulate uh, with dengue virus in the southern of Vietnam. Furthermore, our actual research had chosen some positive RNA to do virus isolation on the C636 cell line. Can you see on the batches we just the harvest dengue virus serotype 1, dengue virus serotype 2, and dengue virus serotype 4. And for virus, uh, chikungunya virus train. For Zika virus, we did not succeed to grow up on the C636 cell line. In order to preliminary analysis about molecular epidemiology of G pathogen, we apply next generation sequencing to identify genotype with idea of the NGA procedure for the uh, from uh, virus isolates or uh, sera and really 
really minerally identified virus genotypes circulating in southern Vietnam. We employ uh, three dengue serotype one, two, and four for chikungunya virus train and only one serum sample to to do whole genome sequencing. Analyzing of 10 viral sequence uh, reveal that dengue virus 1 is belong genotype 1. Dengue virus serotype 2 is belong genotype cosmopolitan. And dengue 4 is belong to genotype 1. On genotype is very similar uh, the genotype circulated in the Asian country. We <clears throat> sequencing of Zika virus, it is so that all Zika were found in Vietnam with Asian genotype. They cluster closely with Chinese sequencer. Phylogenetic tree of chikungunya so that on four isolate chikungunya present in Vietnam uh, is central and southern Africa belong to Indian Ocean class. On chikungunya virus train both to essential mutation of amino acids in envelop E1 reason E1 and envelop E2. The mutation of acid amine residue 211 um, from lysis to glutamic and the uh, mutation of residue of uh, and the mutation of residue 264 from valine to alanine. The mutation uh, previous reported to be associated with virus adapted IDES ADP. In summary, our research revealed that chikungunya and Zika virus have been existed in southern Vietnam and got circulated with dengue virus. Really Murray genotype of some virus strain explained that chikungunya it belong to genotype. ECSA, Zika, genotype Asian, dengue virus, serotype 1, e genotype 1, dengue virus, 2, genotype copomolitan, and dengue virus, 4, e genotype 1. Because of some restriction, uh, we yeah, having small uh, virus train of chikungunya, dengue, and Zika virus. So uh, we would like to uh, to, to uh, improve the strategy to uh, collect some uh, CDZ symbol by uh, opening the K definition to detect suspected patient. And uh, step by step, monitoring the diversity of virus in the Thai, Thai by Thai in Vietnam. In order to have better disease management and preventing measure of virus, 
We would like to say thank you for the CDC USA in Nagasaki University from Zabe to supply us the reason for trial to type BCR in NGA uh, technique in a uh, private laboratory team of us, the institutes in Ho Chi Minh City work together with me on this research. Thank you for your invite me to talk in this conference. Uh, thank you for your listening. Thank you very much for your presentation. Okay, thank you. And now we'll give the floor to Olga Viktorovna Maletska, the Deputy Director on Science and uh, Epidemiological Control at Staropol Plague Control Research Institute of Rospotrebnadzor, Russia. She'll be talking about Crimean hemorrhagic fever, about the new solutions and how to address this problem. Please, the floor is yours. Olga Viktorovna, начинайте, пожалуйста. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Dis distinguished Presidium, distinguished participants at the conference, I will now start my presentation. I beg your pardon for this. Just a couple of, a couple of seconds. And I will start my presentation. Distinguished participants at the conference, uh, the, today I will speak about Crimean hemorrhagic fever. And uh, Crimean hemorrhagic fever uh, is distributed through the whole world. Uh, we can see uh, the strains in Africa, in southeastern Europe, in Asia, and on the territories uh, lower than 50 degrees of northern in, uh, in the northern hemisphere. Uh, the cases of this disease are registered on the annual basis in different states of the world, and the quantity is from um, isolated cases to hundreds. In Russian Federation, the nature outbreak, uh, the, the, the nature source of uh, Crimean hemorrhagic fever is about 815,000 square kilometers. It is in the south of the European part of Russia. The disease is registered on, the, on an annual level, and un, up to 90% of all cases are registered on the territory of the so-called uh, uh, center of uh, this source in the region of uh, Stavropol, Rostov region, and Kalmykia Republic. And the epidemic uh, manifestations are registered in six uh, federal subjects in the south of Russia. Uh, moreover, we have uh, imported infection in Moscow to Voronezh from the territory of Crimea. The constant episodology and epidemiology monitoring of uh, the source of the disease is speaking about the widening of the area of the virus of Crimea and hemorrhagic fever from the main reservoir and uh, ticks are are represented broader and broader. And this uh, is resulting to a severe epidemiological situation in the country. And as of now, it is very topical for us to understand new forecast methods and measures to be prepared um, and to get an adequate forecast of the situation to be able to in time organized anti-epidemic uh, events. The forecasts of uh, the epidemic for the next year are, as a rule, are built on the basis of calculations 
calculation of the tax um, amount. We are um, uh, collecting the information on pre-marginal phases in this period, and the quantity of tax and the way out from the uh, pass winter passivity to the active stage is depending on different factors. This is, of course, uh, the natural factors, uh, climate that is affecting all the phases of reproductive development of the tick in winter and in other uh, times of the year. The quantitum, the quantity of hyaloma marginatum is depending on uh, the diseases, of course, the quantity of the diseases. But the character of epidemics and the level of uh, morbidity is developed by different fa factors. We've compared the spring abnormalities, uh, the southern climate with the quantity of Crimean hemorrhagic uh, uh, fever cases in this region. And as you see from the slide, the quantity of diseases every year was proportional uh, to the abnormal values of temperature uh, and it is equal to the abnormalities. We've compared the abnormalities and increased uh, air temperatures resulted in an earlier activization of the ticks, uh, of the imagos, and uh, extension of the period of their life uh, and uh, at acceleration of their quantity. And to make a better forecast for epidemic situation for this particular disease, we've studied the possible factors of biotic nature, abiotic nature, and social factors. Mathematical methods were also used. We've used the indexes, and then we've, we've made the calculation for the mathematically significant values. Then we created the quantitative forecast for every administrative region of one subject of Russian Federation to check this model. The results of a forecast were visualized on the map. Uh, which provided for uh, obvious picture of epidemiologically uh, unsafe territories for the next period. This forecast was probed on the retrospective data, and starting from 2017, we are running operative forecasts for the situation of, um, for this situation of Crimean hemorrhagic fever. And this forecast is provided for the Rospotrebnadzor uh, governing bodies uh, for the segment with the recommendation on the necessity of enhancement of for, uh, prophylactics and preventive events in a certain administrative region. The results of a research have proven the effect of migration of birds because a very important part of epidemiology of epidemiology of Crimean hemorrhagic fever is monitoring of the initial uh, points of uh, Crimean hemorrhagic fever uh, which is uh, related to migration processes here on the slide we see that seasonal and uh, intraseasonal migrations of birds are affecting the distribution of genetic variants of the virus We've used the phylogenetical methods, bioinformational analysis, which provided for a definition of genetical type of the virus circulating on a certain territory, and to run the analysis of molecular uh, molecular evolution of this variant, which can be useful at epidemiological research and which can be used at the deciphering of the outbreaks. And the research of modern and contemporary and use of contemporary methods of phylogenetic analysis, for example, BICE phylogenics methods, provided for construction of uh, space and time distribution of the virus. And we also could study the speed of evolution of the virus, so in relative terms, understand the intervals of shaping of genetic strains, uh, understand the uh, initial regions of uh, these um, viruses and ways of migration of these variants. And we also could define the um, efficient uh, changes in, migra in population of Crimean hemorrhagic fever during a certain period of time. And we also used we also used these methods to set the following 
On the territory of the Russian Federation, we have circulation of the Crimean hemorrhagic fever in six subtypes within three main genotypes that are represented on this slide. The major uh, genotype is Europe 1. Within Europe 1, we have rio sorts, rio combinants of virus. Genotype has a predominantly territorial binding. So, for example, here in mixed areas of this uh, particular virus, genotypes of Crimean hemorrhagic fever, we see rio sorts variants of the virus. We could also see the virus genotype Africa 3. Uh, genotype uh, in 2013 on the Stavropol region. region. Uh, it also shows that there is a possibility to get uh, uh, the types, uh, new types of Crimean hemorrhagic fever from other regions of the world, and uh, uh, therefore we need to trace its activity. Further on, we've made the analysis of molecular um, and discrete geography. The analysis included nucleotic chains of 100 uh, strains of the virus related to all known genotypes for which we know the year and the region. On the basis of a full-scale uh, S-segments analysis, we, we've uh, made a phylogenetic tree of genome of the virus with the maximum sufficiency of clades. And with 95%, uh, uh, we could understand the speed of the evolution of the virus, 89.9 x5 per site in a year. And uh, the age of the virus of Crimean hemorrhagic fever was 1,684 years. Genotype 3, 125 years of age. Oh, Europe 3, I beg your pardon. And the strain of genetic lines, Europe 3, Africa uh, 3, oh, excuse me, Africa 1, are uh, having uh, one and the same route that was circulating on the territory of Africa predominantly. The genetic line Europe 3 is uh, developed as uh, one arch uh, about 1,415 years ago. And the strains of genotype Europe 3 was enter uh, entered Europe from the territory of Africa. And then further on, it circulated in the south western part of Europe, predominantly in the southern part of Europe and on the territory of Russian Federation. Earlier, the mesofender research built up the model of the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever to, uh, from Congo to Europe that uh, showed that the introduction of virus of uh, Crimean hemorrhagic fever had two steps in its history. The first step was the genetic line Europe 2 stem, that uh, the uh, strain that was uh, coming to Europe with the strain Europe 3, and then through Turkey, uh, it went to the Balkan, uh, to the Balkans uh, with the uh, strains of Europe 1. And to provide for a more clarified model of uh, for genotype Europe 3, we need to conduct a more in-depth study of the strains that are circulating right now in different regions on the of the world and uh, particularly in Europe and correspondently we need to provide uh, perform full genome sequencing here uh, to understand the time and to define the time of shaping of genetic uh, subgroups within the genotype Europe 1 we also performed analysis of molecular hours and screening of the geography. The analysis included nucleotic chains of segments from 56 strains of genotype Europe 1, about which we knew the time and the region of, uh, uh, of these uh, strains. We we could uh, calculate the speed of evolution, which is 4.7 to 10 x5 nucleotic replaces per site uh, per year. We now know the gen the age of genotype Europe one 562 years, and we see that the distribution of the virus of Crimean uh, hemorrhagic fever genotype Europe one it was started 
from the Western Asia, Iran, Iran and Turkey. And we see a tendency of uh, one and the same source in the, uh, for the genotype Europe 1 that was going to the Balkans, to the Crimea, and to the southern Caucasus uh, in uh, Russian Federation. And we need to understand here that through Turkey up to the Black Sea, from Iran to the Caspian Sea, and to the Astrakhan region, Along Volga River, we see the main ways of seasonal migrations of birds from uh, the southern eastern Europe to uh, Africa. And this is also a possibility for uh, the Crimean hemorrhagic fever to go from Africa to these regions, back and forth. The reconstruction of demographic history of population of the genotype Europe 1 Crimean hemorrhagic fever in Russia showed us that the activization of uh, the nature herd um, source in 1999 and further growth in uh, the morbidity are coinciding with the results of uh, enhancement of population of the virus. The peak of the diseases, ca diseases cases is uh, registered in 2007 to 2008, and we here, here see then from 2005 until now the efficient size of population of the virus it remains unchanged, which is speaking about the stability of population of virus uh, of Crimean hemorrhagic fever as of now. And at the same time, according to the preserved, uh, we, we can state that there is uh, the possibility of Crimean hemorrhagic fever to uh, to be registered further in Russia. So, at the end of the day, we may state that we now have the better, uh, we have a significant betterment in uh, the geoinformative systems and forecasts. We've studied the strains of virus in different uh, genetic lines, and we've managed to describe new uh, genetic subgroups, Crimea. We have uh, the description of reassortant variants of virus. We now know the speed of evolution, the age of genotype, and the sources of the strain that is circulating on the territory of Russia. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Olga Viktorovna, distinguished colleagues. As of now, we are concluding our conference. Unfortunately, we are out of time. There is only one presenter left. Thank you very much. We want to thank all of you for your kind attention. Коллеги, закрытие конференции будет в этом же зале, да, в этом же зале в 16.00.